Hey collectors, Anthony from HashesNet here, and today we're going to check out Transformers Legacy Evolution Breakdown, the final part of Minasaur to be released. As a Stunticon breakdown is expected to be fast. The problem is, he is also very paranoid. He thinks that everyone is looking at him even when they are not. He sometimes gets so nervous that his shaking causes disruptions in the airwaves that can cause other vehicles to experience mechanical issues. Before you ask, the box was made to look like the other four Stunticon boxes. I am Moose for the win. We'll be reviewing the complete Minosaur. And in front of me, of course, is Transformers Legacy Technically Evolution Breakdown. Of course, he's part of Minosaur. He's one of the Stunticons. And uh, he's not too different from, well, pretty much any of the other vehicles, short of Mortar Master and the set transformations was exactly the same as Dead End. But uh, here we are. We're looking at this. Now, if you're wondering if I'm going to do a Minasaur thing, like I'm going to show Minasaur and attach him, no, you can watch the I uh, Am Moose for the win when he does his whole coverage of Minasaur because he did the Motor Master, he'll, he'll do the Minasaur. Uh, simply looking at the guy, he's a lot of white with some blue, and we're going to put him aside for a sec and take a look at the box. And the box is the classic Legacy box because they want it for those completionists to have the... Um, original look, so all their boxes look the same, but yes, this is technically evolution. On the side, of course, you see breakdown in all his uh, head and body glory, uh, transformations, uh, QR codes are on the top now, so somebody pointed that out to me, and I was like, oh, okay, great. I don't look at them, I don't care, and I'm told they're quite sometimes we're wrong, so anyway, back to the front, uh, pull the tab out in the back, and you can pull out this cardboard, which had two paper ties, so yay for the environment. Of course, the instructions and the don't hurt yourself papers. So remember, don't hurt yourself. So, uh, breakdown. I mean, he looks pretty good. He's nice and clean. Uh, hopefully he doesn't experience any yellowing. I have yet to experience yellowing in any of my figures. So, uh, knock on wood. So, uh, this is a wood surface. Okay, anyway. Um, I hate this thing. It's supposed to be like a boomerang or some type of bladed weapon. I hate it. It barely holds in his hand. Uh, I mean, sure, it's, it's a fine spoiler, but what they really should have done was given him a second blaster and um, given him something more like uh, Wheeljack, uh, where they split in half. Because uh, it didn't even have to make him come out. They could, they could have just half of them, and once they have them aside, uh, not have to worry about them as being separate pieces and given him a second blaster. So he has two blasters like everybody else in the freaking, uh, well, the three of the car modes anyway, in, in the Stunticons. But no, they give you this stupid thing with the two five millimeter ports on it. it it's like, why? Why bother? Um, whatever. So this thing exists. Uh, the gun is decent enough. It's uh, it's just a modest pistol. I guess I already got some paint peeling on it. Uh, I said it's white with black. Well, maybe that is just extra splash paint on it then. So, you know, it's decent enough. And as I mentioned, his transformation is pretty much the same as Dead End. Uh, fold in the hands. Now, every joint on this guy is super tight. Like, everything. It's like they decided, hey, you know what? Uh, Tony's last figure was uh, super loose. So we're going to give him the super tight one instead. And, um, okay, I hear you. <laughs> I will stop complaining about tightness. Anyway, turn the waist around 180 degrees. Um, his head is on this little joint here. You can just pop it in here and it closes it in here. Um, so there's a couple ways you can go top or bottom. Um, I feel like bottom's probably the right choice since it would have to click into the top anyway. So we will f unfold the legs. Hold on. Urgh, it might be easier if I do it from the top. There we go. And there we go. And what's going to happen is we're going to fold the legs over. And they're going to make sure we pull the toes all the way. They're going to go over here. And I'm going to pull the arms out so they're in the way. And you'll see these two little tabs here. This is clear plastic. Uh, this bothers me a little bit. I've already shaved a little bit, bit off. Not on purpose, mind you. Um, because it, it, it kind of got stuck in there. Uh, but you can't... Just look at that satisfying snap there. That scares the crap out of me as well. When they snap too well, there's something wrong. Anyway... Snaps right into there perfectly, awesomely. And then, of course, you just close these, making sure the feet are flat. All good. Now, for the front end, because you basically have rested this piece on here, 
you got to pull the wheels forward and the arms need to be kind of positioned out of the way because you need to snap this in before you can put the arms in place or at least that's what this version is so tight and so like there's very little room to mess up that you got to make sure everything goes in the right way um and i think the best approach might be to put these like this and then put them together and you can see there's tabs under here if i can get it to work it because what happens is there's little areas in which they click in on the bottom and i being me have the worst type of luck so i'm trying to get the uh, yeah, so it's not going to work either way I drew it. So let's see if I... Well, Sarah, you know what? I'm going to snap in the arms and see if maybe that makes it easier. Everything is looks easier on camera. Those, those semen kind of click in nicely, but anyway. Uh, let's try this again. Ah, there we go. There we go. And, the, and you see my problem. These just won't want to go in because they have to fit into this bit here. Hi, how you doing? Okay, anyway. So, it's a pain in the butt, and I've gotten it to work, like, painlessly once. And it was by attaching them underneath, and then kind of... There we go. So, that might be the best approach. You kind of have them close, but not all the way out. Another clear port with a bit here. A very loud snap. That uh, it scares the crap out of me. I tell you what. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as hooking this thing up to anything, I mean, I guess there might be a place somewhere. I feel like it goes somewhere. Like, there we go. Ugh, no, it has fallen. Ugh, there, it has to be like perfectly flush, but there's some storage. It doesn't seem to get too much in the way if it's flush. So, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what are you expecting for basically a combiner piece? They all kind of have that general body so this windshield could pop out and the foot can be made out of it. But uh, speaking of which, uh, because I did have a problem with this, I'm going to show you one thing I did to get this window back out and, and hopefully it'll prevent you from breaking the tab or the window itself. First thing was to basically pull back on the back. You know what? Take this off first pull back on the back a little bit to pop the hands back or arms back out and just kind of loosen them up and pull them out and uh, then if you do it right you should be able to kind of position downwards this piece to pop out the windshield without there we go and so that's a way to get the windshield out without totally uh, messing it up tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.